Looks like Facebook is going to cooperate with me a little bit. So we're gonna to try to work this thing out. For those of you who may be tuning in on Facebook, go ahead and drop us a comment. Let us know that you can hear us loud and clear. And we're gonna go ahead and get this party started. Uh, no need of delaying any further. We promised an eight o'clock webinar and it is 8.02. So let's go ahead and make this thing happen. Um, for those of you who do not know me uh, or us, the group that invited you to this particular webinar, my name is H. Cortez, also known as the Financial Health Mentor, I'm the co-founder of an organization called the Financial Freedom Fighters, and we do exactly what our name says we do. We fight for financial freedom of our family, our households first and foremost, but we're willing to fight for the uh, financial freedom of those who are willing to fight alongside of us, so that could be you, if what we're gonna share with you tonight makes any sense to you. So give me one second. I just want to make sure that I can see any Facebook comments that we may have coming through. All right. So if you are serious about building generational wealth and you know you need a game plan, I want you to put game plan in the comments because that's what we're going to talk to you guys tonight about game plan. Uh, here's one of the, the caveats that I want to give to you guys before we even get started, though, is building wealth is a team sport. And because money and finances and credit is kind of a taboo situation, what we find is that most people will go off and isolate themselves and try to work out their financial issues on their own. Right. And, and here's the problem with that. Because you don't know that building wealth is a team sport, you go and isolate yourself and try to fix your finances on your own, and you don't even realize that all of these other entities are ganking up on you to get your wealth from you, right? Just think about this for a second. You go into a Walmart, right? And you are going to pick up some milk and some eggs. Well, we don't even realize that two entities have already ganged up on us to get our money, right? Uh, the dairy farmers and the chicken farmers have ganged up to get our money, right? Walmart enters the fray and say, hey, we're going to offer some additional stuff when they come in to get their milk and their eggs. So they have all of these other retailers and vendors. They're all ganging up on you to get your money. Right. When you walk through the front door, you got to walk past the customer service where you got Western Union, MoneyGram, all of those people. Then you got your banking center right there. Then you got your uh, eye care center right there. Then you have your uh, your subways or your blimpies or, or your uh, restaurant right there to try to get some of your money. Then uh, Walmart has their own little concession stand where they're popping the popcorn. Right. And then you have all the other vendors ganging up on you to try to get your money. But you, because you don't understand building wealth is a team sport, you isolate yourself and you try to get everything done on your own. And that's a tough, tough, tough situation to be in. So let me give you the, the layout of the events uh, just so that you know where we're going. First, we're gonna talk about the entities that uh, or are the challenges that you have to overcome if you're going to build well. Even if you're going to be a stickler and try to build it yourself, you still have to overcome these five things. We're going to talk about uh, our solution to helping you overcome those five things. And of course, we're going to give you an opportunity to partner with us if what we say tonight makes sense to you. I'm going to show you a little bit about uh, our website, how that whole thing functions, and some of the tools and resources that you have access to. Uh, and then if time permit, I'd like to show you what building wealth could do if you overcome these issues in terms of investing in yourself just a little bit of money. So first and foremost, I always like to do this and get this out of the way. Uh, if what we say makes sense, it'll cost you $50 to get started with us and then $35 per month. So I know that's going to knock some of you guys out of the bat right away because for some reason you think 
that you spent a lot of money getting into your situation, but you don't want to spend any money getting out of the situation. And that's OK. Right. I, I had to grow to that point where I realized that, you know what, at some point I'm going to have to invest in myself if I'm going to change my situation. So $50 to start, $35 per month. What are some of the things that are holding you back financially? Let's break them down. Number one, high taxes, right? Let's just be clear. When you look at your paycheck, and a lot of you guys are working a lot of overtime, and you don't realize that the more you work, the more they tax. Some of you guys have gone out and gotten a second job. And listen, don't get me wrong. This is not a job bashing presentation. I understand why you have a second job, because no one taught you how to make the money from your first job work for you because uncle sam took 33 percent of your paycheck you said man i gotta make ends meet so i'm gonna go get me another part-time job i'm gonna put in an extra 20 30 hours a week make some extra money but then he's taking 33 percent of that paycheck as well so you got to overcome high taxes number two more credit and one of the things, one of the little known things that's holding people back financially as it relates to credit is not being able to get the job they want because employers are starting to check credit history before they make a hiring decision as a way to determine whether or not you're responsible, right? You know a young lady who was up for a promotion for a little while, kept getting denied the promotion and didn't really know why. And then she finally was informed that you have to have a certain credit score uh to get approved for this position right how many of you guys have tried to get that dream job right some of you guys have tried to get that promotion you've been working really hard to climb the corporate ladder and the first thing that happens when you don't get that dream job is what you go and revise your resume you're saying it's got to be something on this resume that's holding me back you go and work a little bit harder you come earlier you stay later you said maybe i haven't shown and proven myself enough to get that promotion what if it's your credit that's keeping you back right what else do you have to overcome you got to overcome debt problem with debt is a lot of us went into debt with poor credit so the interest rates are sky high on the debts that we have card note is crazy high mortgage is crazy high right and we're wondering why we're struggling to get ahead even when we are making a little bit more money than we have in the past right so you got high uh, taxes poor credit uh too much debt uh, then we have no savings right i don't know about you guys but i refuse to let my grandchildren and my children struggle at the same level i struggled on right i'm going to make sure Sure that they have something uh, a solid foundation to build on right see see when we say building wealth is a team sport you have to think about people who actually build wealth right they build it to a certain level and then they pass it down to their children it's like running a relay race right and here's what we've been doing traditionally in this relay race right uh as our parents you know, and our grandparents, they, they they took off running. They took the little resources they had and they, they ran as hard and as fast as they could, right? But what they didn't realize is that you need three forms of education to thrive in this country. You need a scholastic education, you need a vocational education, and you need a financial education. So they ran as far as they could with that scholastic education. Right. Some of them got a vocational education. And when they got to the end of their race, they reached back and they passed the baton to the children. Right. But instead of the children being able to pick up from where the grandparents left off, the children had to go all the way back to the starting line and they had to start their race from there. Right. So the children, they ran as hard as they could. They got a scholastic education. Some of them got degrees. Some of them got trade school education. They got vocational education, but they still didn't get a financial education, but they ran as hard and as, as fast as they could. And they got to a situation where it appears that they're doing better than their grandparents or their parents, right? Because when you look at on the surface, you said nicer house, nicer car, 
better neighborhood, better school district. But when they pass the baton to their children, their children still had to go all the way back to the finish line to get started because no one ever taught us that we need a financial education to actually thrive in this country. So no savings is killing us financially. And last but not least is flat wages, right? And I know some of you guys may think, maybe say Cortez, uh, I actually did get a raise on my job, right? Let me ask you this, percentage wise, did the raise that you recently got on your job, was it equal to or greater than the rate of inflation? See, the last raise I got on my job uh, was 1.75%, uh, right? And here's what's funny. My boss who clearly was not happy with his raise or else he wouldn't have told me this, he said, after speaking with some of the executives, we determined that even though we had record sales quarter after quarter, right? Every quarter we broke a new record. He said the company decided to give the profits to the shareholders instead of the employees, right? And it was at that point that I really realized that if I'm going to do what I wanna do for my family, I can't continue to allow someone else have control over what they feel I'm worth, right? Because clearly my skill set is worth something because they're paying me something. And if they're worth their salt and the gold as a company, then what I'm bringing to the table, they're probably making three, four, five times what I'm actually bringing to the table because that's just how capitalism works, right? So I have to start thinking, what if I took my talents like LeBron James and, and, and away from corporate and start doing my own thing? What if I started trying to leverage all of my talents to bring all the money in myself instead of farming myself out to others, right? So flat wages are killing us, but when we get that little cost of living increase, we think we're doing okay because we don't understand what inflation is doing. See, the cost of living doubles every 18 to 24 years. If you stay on the pace that you're on on your job, can you say without a shadow of a doubt, 20 years from now, you're gonna make twice the amount of money that you're making today? See, we wanna put all of this stuff in perspective, not to uh, uh, rain on your parade, so to speak, but to allow you to see uh, the writing on the wall, right? Pun intended, so that you can start making some adjustments today. Right. What are some of the adjustments that you can make? See, the company that I was able to get all of this information from is called My Econ. It's a personal financial success company. And what they determine is that if high taxes is one of the things that's hurting people financially, let's look at how one could approach that to overcome high taxes. Right. See, what we have to understand that in America, how you make your money determines how you're taxed. See, 95%, 95% of Americans make 100% of their income through a job. Again, nothing wrong with a job. You gotta put food on the table, right? Also known as a W-2. However, when you're making your money with a job or a W-2, you're gonna be taxed at 28 to 33%, right? If, on the other hand, more people start making money with a business, aka a 1099, then the tax uh, uh, ramifications of someone who makes their money this way is roughly 18 to 23%. See, right off the bat, you start seeing that there's something different between the people who make money with business and those who make money with labor. And then last but not least, you can choose to make money as an investor where you'll be taxed less than 15%, right? So our plan and what we are trying to teach as many people that will listen is how to systematically move from the situation where they're taxed the most to where they're taxed the least. And the best way to do that, believe it or not, <laughs> 
I know a lot of people don't want to hear this, man. And, and I, I mean, it's, it's just true. The best way for you as an employee to find your way over here in the next two to five years, two to seven years, two to 10 years is to start a home-based business. Now, this is usually the part of the presentation where everybody jump on offline. I watch my numbers on Facebook go from 40 to 10, right? Because people don't want to hear this. I, I know, Cortez, I don't have it in me to start a business. I don't know what to start a business around or about. And, and they come up with all sorts of valid, legitimate reasons not to. And I get it. Question is, how the heck, if you don't do anything different, when you get to the age where you no, no longer want to work, you're not physically able to work, or employers will no longer hire you, how are you going to maintain your lifestyle? So you got to do something different, even if doing something different is uncomfortable for you. So what do we say? Here's why you start a home-based business. Because remember those five things I wrote on the board? We said taxes, debt, credit, no savings, or investments, and flat wages. Right? In order for us to overcome all five of these things, in the most effective and efficient manner, the home-based business is the best solution. Why? Because the first thing that you're gonna do when you start a home-based business, especially if you plug in with us, is you're gonna adjust your form W-4, right? On your job, the W-4 form tells your employer how much money to withhold from your paycheck. So when you have a home-based business, there's a section on that form that talks about whether or not you have a home-based business. You're going to be able to now say, yes, I do. As a result, anywhere from $200 to $600 per month will come back into your paycheck. Now, we just start to attack taxes over here just because we have a home-based business, right? Then we're going to take some of this tax savings and we're going to use a good portion of it to eliminate debt. Right. See, we're we're able to efficiently affect all of these things just by having a home based business. Right. So now you're going to start eliminating some debt. Then if you uh, uh, look at one of these other things over here is at, at some point you might want to start to eliminate or minimize some expenses. One of the best ways to minimize expenses is to fix your credit. So if you have less than a 700 credit score, then the interest rates that you're paying on the debt that you are, uh, the money that you borrowed, that's the same money that you could be building generational wealth with. So if we help you get your credit score above 700 and then you can refinance your mortgage, uh, for instance, and that brings back an extra $200, to go with the $600 you brought back from taxes, do you think you can accelerate your debt elimination plan? If you refinance your car loan and your car loan went from $450 a month down to $250 a month, do you think you can use that extra $200 to pay on the principal on that same car and pay it off faster? See, a home-based business can help you do all of those things, right? Here's the other reason that you have to have a home-based business, right? Three reasons. Number one, there's something called pride of ownership, man. There's nothing like the feeling I get up when I, I, I have when I wake up in the morning, man. And it's twofold. One, it is the most exhilarating feeling in the world because I have my own thing going on, right? But then there's also a healthy fear that drives me. Why? Because if I don't work, I don't eat. See, some of you guys have a job and you can actually go into work tomorrow and you can uh, 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 sit behind your desk and you can kind of fake like you're doing some work, right? You can kind of 
you get by without doing a whole lot. Some of you guys can actually call off work tomorrow and you're still going to get paid because you have vacation time or, or sick time or whatever, right? Not me. I don't produce we don't eat right but that's a good feeling because i'm taking my gifts and my talents and i'm using them to put put food on my table so that's that's exhilarating for me the other reason is it is is high past the time that we show our children something different i, I don't know if you guys agree or not but we, we got to show our children something different right come on we are in the fourth fifth sixth generation of work a job as hard as you can, as long as you can, and cross your fingers when you get to retirement. That ain't working, y'all. That ain't working. Come on, we, we, we keep on passing the baton, but when we pass the baton, the children have to keep going back to the starting line, and they're trying to compete in this global economy, but every time they get the baton, they have to go all the way back to the starting line. Financial education is a way, right? So here's the other reason, taxes, right? See, we just showed you that just by having a business, it'll put some money back into your pocket. Here's another way it's gonna put money back into your pocket. How many of you guys got bills that you're gonna pay month in and month out, whether you got a home-based business or not, right? All of us, right? Cell phone, internet, cable, car notes, House notes, rent, mortgage, either when uh, you're going to pay for your kids. My son starts school tomorrow, senior. I've already looked at what it's going to cost me this year, right? Well, it's not really going to cost me. It's going to cost Uncle Sam, and I'm going to show you why. See, when you have a business that you run from your home, I'm actually in my home studio right now. So the electricity that powers my whole house also powers my home studio. So Uncle Sam says, hey, Anytime you use a service for personal and for business, we'll let you write a portion of that same expense off, right? See, my light bill became a business expense when I started a business, right? So we're talking about cell phone, utilities, uh, internet, Miles, drive a lot. Of, I drive my car a lot for business, right? Uh, kids' wages, right? See, I have a home-based business, and my son will work in my business, and I'm going to pay him a salary. He's going to take that salary that I pay him, and he's going to pay for his senior dues. He's going to pay for his senior pictures. He's going to pay for his class ring. He's going to pay for his basketball shoes and uniform and all of that stuff. If he was in private school, he would even pay for private school. And guess what? I get to write all of that off. See, before I had a home-based business, I would give him an allowance. It's the same money, y'all. It's the same money. But now I get to shift that money through my business into my son's pocket and he takes care of his expenses and I get to write it all off. Are you guys starting to get it? Starting to get the picture now? See, a home-based business, no matter how big or how small, can put a tremendous amount of money back into your household. And if you know what to do with that money, you can build generational wealth starting with the paycheck that you're making right now, right? So I'm gonna pay, I'm gonna start writing off all of the things that I'm spending money on right now. Travel, I didn't put travel on here, right? We don't take family vacations, we take family business retreats. All of my family, are, they're, in, they're in my business in some capacity, right? So even when we travel, we get to write off a lot of those expenses. That makes sense? Hopefully that's making sense to you guys, right? And then finally, we're doing all of this, which is called cash flow management. We're doing all of this. We're managing our cash flow differently because now we're thinking like entrepreneurs and not employees so that we can get out of debt, fix our credit, lower our taxes, and ultimately start putting all of our money over into some investments. So now when we pass the baton to the children, they don't have to go all the way back to the finish, to the starting line. 
they can pick up right where we're leaving off, right? So a lot of people ask, well, Cortez, what do I invest in? Whatever floats your boat, man. Uh, think about it. There's only two reasons people don't invest. Number one, they're scared to death. And number two, they don't have the cash flow, or so they think. I just showed you how to free up the cash flow. We have investment education that will teach you the two things that you need to know most of all to start growing your money. That's terminology and perspective. We will show you how to have the right perspective when you get the terminology down. See, the language of money is completely different. It has its own language. And, and that's for a reason because the, they never teach you this language in school, right? They never teach you this language. See, see, for instance, in school, they will teach you the word interest, but they'll teach it from the perspective of you paying compound interest on credit cards, you paying interest on loan or, or borrowing money, but they don't teach you interest for uh, uh, the interest on an investment where you're gonna earn interest, right? They teach you what poor credit will do. They'll teach you about subprime, right? That means you are below the prime credit score that they would like to finance. So they'll teach you all about subprime, but they don't teach you about high yield. Well, Cortez, what's high yield? Well, these companies that we like to spend money with, they all borrow money. And not all of them have the best credit scores. So when a company has a poor credit score, they pay higher interest rates too. They call it high yield. So if I put my money in a high yield investment, that means I'm loaning my money to a corporation who has a few blemishes on their credit score. And because they have those blemishes, they have to pay me back a high yield or a higher interest rate. You see, they, they never teach us this stuff in school. But you will learn that here. So you might want to invest in paper assets. It's your prerogative if you want to. You might want to invest in real estate. I mean, more millionaires have been created in real estate than almost any other industry, right? Uh, you might want to invest in cryptocurrency. I don't know. You might want to invest in other traditional businesses like get to become a, an a accredited investor and start investing in companies before they go public. Huh? Yeah. See, but you have to be under the right knowledge in order to make some of the moves that we all fantasize about making, right? We heard about some of the things that Nas was able to do, took his his his, his skill set that God gave him for free which is his ability to be, be, be fancy with words, right? They call it rap and rhyming, right? He took his skill that God gave him for free. He turned that skill into some cash. He took the cash he bought, he built, and he invested in some assets that created more cash. What I want all of y'all watching this today to know is that you got some skills that God gave you for free as well. You're taking those skills and you turn them into cash on a job. But 95% of Americans are taking that cash and instead of buying, building, or investing in an asset, they take the cash and they turn it into trash. And it's not your fault. It's, it's, you've been conditioned to do that, right? We wanna help you unlearn so you can relearn how to build generational wealth. Guys, $50 to get you started. I know I said I was gonna go over some other stuff, but heck, we are already at 30 minutes, man. So uh, I, I don't know what else to say. I was gonna show you guys a website, show you a financial calculator and all that stuff, man. But just get back. Whoever puts you on this webinar, I want you to reach out to them. Matter of fact, I want you to comment, I'm ready right now. And then I want you to tag the person. If you're on, if you're on Facebook, I want you to tag the person whose page you're seeing this on. So if you're seeing it on my page, for instance, I want you to say, I'm ready at Financial Health Mentor. If you're seeing it on my man James page, I want you to say, I'm ready at James. If you're seeing it on Chad's page, I want you to say, I'm ready at Chad Smith. 
And we're going to get you plugged in right now tonight. And then you're going to be able to come back into this same webinar because we're about to run into a team meeting where we're going to actually do some additional training on how this works, guys. Last but not least, before we go, I want, I want you to, uh, to, to see this right here. Right? I want you to see this right here. Because some people say, Cortez, I've seen that type of thing before, man. And to be honest with you, I don't want to talk to my friends and family about building a business. I want you guys to realize something. Friends and family will support you in whatever you do in a lot of cases. But there's over 100 million people in this country who need what we have to offer right now. In fact, 10 million of those people every single month go onto the internet and they type in how to make money from home, how to start a business on the internet, how to build generational wealth. So when your friends and family won't support you, we'll show you how to get in front of those people who are actually looking for people like us to show them the way. There are people who are hungry, right? Four and a half years ago, I was hungry, working my tail off to put food on the table for my family, right? One of the worst feelings, I don't know how many fellas we have watching right now, one of the worst feelings ever is constantly having to tell my children no, not because they don't deserve to have good things, but because I couldn't afford it as their dad, man. I have raised seven sons through this household. Five of my own sons, a cousin and a nephew. And until last year, none of them have ever been suspended from school. All graduated with good grades, went off to college, good kids, right? But when they want the latest this, they want to go here, they want to go there, I have to tell them no, you can't afford it. We have a way out for you if you want it. Comment, I'm ready. Tag the person who got you on this webinar. Tag the person whose page you're seeing this on, on social media, and let's get you started today. I mean, 150% commission. Every time you refer somebody to what we do, you can make up to $75 per referral, right? You refer 10 people in a week, that's $750 of extra money you can use to get yourself out of debt. I was going to show all of that stuff, man, but y'all get the point, man. Get back with the person who shared this video with you, who got you on this webinar, and just tell them you're ready, right? Test drive our whole system for 30 days. If you don't like it, you don't see we're taking you in the right direction financially, then you can cancel. No cancellation fees, none of that stuff, man. But go ahead and get in, man. I, I can't guarantee you're going to make a, a ton of money with us because I don't know who you are, how hard you work, any of that stuff. The one thing I can guarantee, though, is you don't get in, we'll never send you a check. I can guarantee you that. So get with the person who got, got you onto this webinar. Say, I'm ready. Tag that person. They'll get you started tonight. And until I talk to you next time, I want you to get your money up because you absolutely can do it. But more importantly, you deserve to do it, each and every single one of you. Now hustle up.